the data taker product line comes in three main categories of loggers. We have the DT80 and the 80G, we have the 82i and the 82e, and we also have the DT85 series. We'll just go over a few of the features on the three different categories. The DT80 and the DT80G have five analog input channels which can be configured in different ways to accommodate for a higher uh, input count. You can hook up up to three analog inputs to each analog channel. The DT80G and the DT80 have one main difference in that the DT80 has an internal battery that allows the data taker to log for a few minutes or depending on the channel count. The DT80G has substituted the internal battery for a vibrating wire or also known as a piezometer analog input. So there is an additional circuit board inside the DT80G that allows the logger to pull and record vibrating wire or piezometer signals. The DT82i and the 82e are a lower cost and a lower channel count loggers. The DT82e has one serial port, whereas the DT82i has two. Um, the DT82e has Modbus Slave, and the DT82i has Modbus Master and Slave. The Data Taker product line with Dicor Technologies is Class 1 Div 2 approved. The configuration is transferable across the loggers as long as the channel count is met. For oil and gas, the DT80G is uh, more of a standard logger because most of our clients do use the vibrating wire interface where ha they have the downhole sensors that put out a uh, vibrating wire signal, uh, which is a frequency signal, and that only the DT80G or the DT85G can handle uh, internally. We are, however, able to add, uh, through the Modbus feature that most of the loggers have, we're able to add uh, extra peripherals that allow for different signal types if the data taker cannot read them. The DT80, the 80G, the 85, and the 85G have eight bi-directional digital I.O. and all the data takers have one analog output. All models of the data takers support quadrature encoder inputs, so we can have phase encoders tied into uh, the loggers and we can keep track of the phase and the uh, count based on the input. The SDI-12 protocol is a fairly standard uh, communication protocol among sensors and the data taker fully supports it. Some of the data takers do come in a Wi-Fi or a cellular modem option, which basically allows for wireless connectivity right out, out of the box. All our data takers do have a 10 base T Ethernet port, which is plenty fast for uh, data communication that we do. They all come with a web server built in that allows for a user to go into a web browser and configure and monitor and download the data from from any of the loggers. The DT85 and the 85G, uh, they're the, high, the bigger model of the data taker. Uh, they have 16 analog inputs, which again can be tripled up because of the dual isolation technology that the data taker uses. You can have three analog inputs per channel. So if you didn't need the isolation, you can have up to 48 analog inputs hooked up to a DT85 right out of the box. And the 85G, once again, includes the vibrating wire uh, circuit board, which allows the DT85 model to uh, read vibrating wire signals. Most of the data taker models support Modbus master and slave, except for the DT82E, which is uh, just a Modbus uh, slave. It cannot be a Modbus master. The DT82I and the 82E have two analog channels, which allows for up to six common-ended analog inputs. And if you require isolation, then you can do up to four analog inputs. The analog inputs on the data taker are universal. They can be configured to read different kinds of sensors, such as 4 to 20 milliamps, 0 to 10 milliamps, 0 to 10 volts, uh, RTDs, thermistors, thermocouples, uh, you name it. There's not a lot of analog signals that the data taker cannot handle. So the CEM20 is a channel expansion module for the data taker line of data loggers. It allows for up to 20 channels to be connected and multiplexed to a single analog input on the data taker. Uh, the cables that are required to connect the CEM20 to a data taker come along with it in a box. It takes up one analog input on the data taker, but it gives you a 20 additional channels, so it's a net 19 channel unit. 
The analog inputs on the CEM20 work the same way as uh, they do on the data taker. Um, there's two control lines that connect the data taker to the CEM20 and there's internal relays in the CEM20 that switch between the channels to engage each channel uh, to be read by the main data taker. The DT80, the 85, the 80G and the 85G are all compatible with the CEM20. So with the 80 for example or the 80G you could have up to five CEM20s connected which would allow you to do a hundred analog inputs and if you had common ended inputs you could do up to 300 analog signals. With the DT85G, you can have up to 16 CEM20s connected, which can allow you to connect up to 960 analog inputs.